The information you're about to see covers the Fernal Plant One large-scale technology demonstration project. The project features decontamination and decommissioning technologies. The project was sponsored by the Department of Energy Office of Science and Technology decontamination and decommissioning focus area. The intent of the work was to demonstrate technologies for decontamination and decommissioning of Department of Energy radioactive facilities and to use technologies off the shelf that are ready for application. We intended to tackle real world problems and compare new technologies side by side with the usual or baseline method of performing the same operation. The intent therefore was to provide real world performance information and cost data. The type of information that bidders would put into their bids for jobs of this nature. The work was contributed to by several important partners. Florida Annual Fernald, the U.S. Department of Energy at Fernald and at Morgantown, West Virginia, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, and B&W Nessie, the prime contractor performing the work. These partners joined forces to provide a very practical project that produced useful data on cost and performance. The information will be available in Department of Energy Innovative Technology Summary Reports. Should you need more information, please contact Florida Annual Fernald Technology Programs. As the late great screen star Betty Davis said, attempt the impossible to improve your work. Her words ring true for not only the entertainment business, but for the construction business as well. Sometimes it may seem impossible to improve upon dismantlement and demolition technologies that workers have used successfully for years. But innovation can only happen when everyone involved is willing to attempt the impossible. Throughout the DOE complex, torch cutting is used to dismantle large tanks, pipes, and production equipment. Many D&D &D workers thought it would be impossible to improve upon the process of torch cutting. But the EM50 funded Plant One Large Scale Technology Demonstration Project, which has been bringing innovation to many Department of Energy cleanup sites since its inception in 1996, recently discovered the Oxy Gasoline Torch, a technology made by a California based company called Petrogen. This torch was found to be faster and more economical than the more commonly used acetylene torch. Well, it's funny, when you first. Um when we first started communicating uh, this information about what we found is a lot, a lot of the vendors, uh, a lot of the other uh, end users out there don't believe it. They say, no, it can't be true. I've never heard of this gasoline torch, you know, uh, and, and I've always used acetylene and no, it, it can't cut faster, you know, it can't be cheaper. You know, they just do not believe you. In order to persuade end users that the Oxy Gasoline Torch is a viable option, the Fernald Large Scale Technology Demonstration Team set up a live demo of the product in Plant One, pitting it directly against the acetylene torch to see which one was more effective. They found that the Oxy Gasoline Torch cut faster and the fuel consumed was less expensive. During the demonstration of the Oxy Gasoline Torch, we had the opportunity to actually have a side-by-side -side demonstration to the baseline technology. We had two people cutting the same piece of steel. The Oxy Gasoline Torch had completed a full 36 inches of cut and was starting on another 9 inches of cut. And in the same time, the acetylene torch had only completed 20 inches. The cutting speed and ease of handling that we saw with this torch was a significant improvement over the standard acetylene method of cutting, especially when you get into thicker or heavier steels. Uh, it's an improvement uh, from a standpoint of cost, that is it uses a cheaper fuel and it cuts faster so you have labor savings and, and we feel it's also safer in, in the fact that you're dealing with uh, uh, a liquid versus a gas and uh, Trying to move around an acetylene cylinder is a lot more difficult than, than moving around a, uh, uh, you know, a two and a half gallon can of gasoline. 
Don Kraus of Babcock and Wilcox, a subcontractor to Flor Daniel Fernald, was impressed by the oxygasoline torch because it more completely oxidizes the metal, which allows for a cleaner cut, while the acetylene torch often leaves behind slag. So that there is material that you have to chip away or, or sometimes it will remelt behind a pass if you're going through deep metals. You'll have to make a number of passes with the acetylene torch because it tends to flow back in behind it, whereas with the, with the oxy gasoline torch it will burn all the way through and then blow out. You know, it will burn away the metal and it won't flow back in behind you. We did a, uh, at the end of each of the demonstrations, we do a debriefing where we bring all the workers in and we ask them, you know, what did you like, what didn't you like, and they, they loved it. Uh, I mean, they basically just loved the torch. They couldn't believe how well that that thing cut through, particularly uh, um, thick steel. Many workers may be nervous about using gasoline as a fuel for a cutting tool because of its high rate of flammability. In reality, though, the oxy-gasoline torch is just as safe as the acetylene torch because liquid gasoline is not flammable in the absence of oxygen. The most important part of our design is that the gasoline is liquid from the tank, clear through the hose, through the torch, and into the tip. It vaporizes only in the tip, which means that you cannot have a backflash up the fuel line. The amount of spillage that you get if you cut a line is very minimal. The, um, you don't have to worry about the pressurized cylinders of, of acetylene, tip overs, things like that. You're carrying around a small three gallon gas tank um, that you put in a flammable storage locker at the end of each day. The oxy gasoline torch demonstration by the team at Flora Daniel Fernald has been quite a success story. They are now in the process of sharing the information with other sites in the DOE complex, the Department of Defense, vendors, subcontractors, and other companies and countries that are in the midst of cleanup activities. We developed one-page fact sheets, we made videotapes, we attended national conferences, and in one case we did a live demonstration at an international D&D exposition. Another, uh, another strategy to that communications is um, given the low capital investment cost of this torch system, which is less than a thousand dollars, and given the, the, the cost savings that you see from this, it pays to buy these things and give them away, at least to just help with, you know, spreading the word, you know, let someone else ha have a success with it, and then from there, then you'll, you know, uh, they'll communicate that, in th their successes, and hopefully uh, it'll, it'll just, you know, uh, multiply, you know, spread from there. The team recently received word that the Russian military complex is using the oxy-gasoline torches to dismantle nuclear weapons. But there are many contractors uh, from this country who are heavily involved, Bechtel, Westinghouse, uh, Morrison Knudsen, to name a few, that are, are heavily involved in the Eastern Bloc country work. So this type of a piece of equipment would be extremely useful in that situation. It's not unlike what we're doing here. The same principles and the same uh, problems occur. I mean, it's still steel that you have to cut, whether it's a weapon or a building. Other cleanup sites in the DOE complex are also planning to take advantage of the oxy-gasoline torch. Take the facility in Ashtabula, Ohio, for example. I, I guess we got word that, uh, that Ashtabula was trying to cut up a uh, uh, a press, a metal press, I don't know all the details, but you know, it's a huge uh, piece of equipment. We heard that, that they started on cutting up theirs, uh, this press with an acetylene torch, weren't having success with that, so now we're trying to uh, have a technology exchange with them and, and maybe give them a torch and let them go at it with, this, uh, with the oxy-gasoline torch and, and, and see how much uh, better they do with that. A success story. That's the best way to describe the efforts of the Fernald large-scale technology demonstration team who tested the oxy-gasoline torch and communicated the results. Perhaps the impossible is attainable. Well, the oxy-gasoline torch has shown the value of the large-scale uh, demonstration projects uh, as promoted and put forth by the D&D focus area in Morgantown, West Virginia. 
We're very thrilled to have been a part of the large-scale demonstration project and we look forward to working with the focus area on further projects. For further information on the Oxy Gasoline Torch, contact Mark Peters, Larry Stebbins, or Paul Pettit at Flora Daniel Fernald.